Hello everyone, this is Daily Developing and this is the third video tutorial on Python. In this tutorial, we're going to be we're going to learn how to write a more complex calculator. So I can show you what we will learn is we can type, for example, 5 plus 3 or plus 3 equals 8. And also you can see you can type, okay, let's say 3 minus 1. Well, it returns two. So last time it added, this time it subtracted, right? So because we put minus, it's smart enough to know, okay, now we have to subtract. And this is what we're gonna be doing today. So if you wanna learn how to do that, make sure to stick around. All right, the first thing that I would like to start off with the video is the homework. So last time I asked you to make, it, make uh, a program that accepts three integers and then multiplies them out and then prints the result. So here's how you do this, right? You create first number, second number, third number, and in this case, let's do three, times four is 12, and times two is 24. All right, so it worked. Now, this is the idea. And also like one thing I forgot to mention uh, in the last video was the variables need to be, um, they cannot have spaces in them. They need to be just like one word. You can't have spaces. So when it comes to naming variables that require one or more, like two or more words, in our case, right, first number, second number, there are, few, there are two ways that we basically uh, name variables. First way is just, um, we always start with lowercase letter. And then the second one is just uppercase, right? So second and then number is, the N is uppercase. Third, so again, first letter is lowercase, the first letter of the second word is uppercase. And if we wanted to, let's say, do third number, you know, index or something like that, just, just you know, I just randomly made up this word. Okay, so again, the third word is also uh, uppercase. So we start lowercase and then every single first letter of the word would be uppercase. Or what we could do, I think this, this version is actually more popular among the Python developers. Um, but, in, you know, in some other languages like Java, for example, this, this would be more popular, but in Python, this is, so you, you say the first word and then you do the, the space bar here, the underscore, and then the number. So, sorry, not space bar, the underscore. Make sure there's, there cannot be any space bars. So, you know, you can put underscore, but the idea is you cannot have space. Right now, if we run this, it's not gonna work. First number, uh, no. Variable can only be one word length. All right, so now that we finished the homework, Let's actually start learning on how to write that more complicated version of of uh, calculator. First thing, let's create a symbol here that equals to an input. And this is not going to be an int because symbol will be either plus or minus, so it's not going to be a number. Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to check if it's plus or a minus. If it's plus, I want you to print plus. And if it's minus, I want you to print minus. How can we do this? Well, there's this one statement called the if statement. We just type if symbol equals the double equals plus. Now, what what is double equals, you might ask? So there is actually a difference in Python between one equals and two equals. One equals means it's a statement. Like in this case, you're saying symbol equals to the input. So whatever I input, that's gonna be the symbol. Now, that means again, that's a statement. But double equals, that's a question. You're not saying symbol equals five. You're saying, does symbol equal to five? So if you put it one equals symbol here, then Python won't know what to do. Okay, well, symbol equals plus, but okay, but what do you want me to do? Now, if you if you put two equals sign, now you're asking the program, is it plus, All right? So there's a difference. Again, one equals is a statement, Two equals is a question. And in this case, that's a question, that's not a statement. So that's why we have to use double equals. And then what we do at the end of the if statement is we have to put colon, all right? So it's it's the colon is right next to L. So just uh, shift colon, all right? Shift semicolon will give you colon. Okay, and then the way Python syntax and what is syntax is pretty much the structure on how you, you're you supposed to write the code is, you're gonna put an indent after this. Every time you see a column at the end, you have to put an indent. 
and then you can do print so let's print plus here okay and then if we had another if statement let's say blah blah right next time it's going to be a double indent and then if we you know again had another if statement if blah blah we have a triple indent so every time you see a column you increase one indent okay and then to leave the if statement right so you put here so in other words everything that goes in in this indent right will only apply if symbol equals to five but if you leave that, that's just gonna run so now what we have to do is we need to do if symbol equals to minus okay then print minus okay something like this now let's run it and see if it works so let's put plus okay print in plus now let's put minus okay print in minus now a common mistake could be is if this if statement is indented in this case minus will not work why you might ask is because this if statement will only run if symbol equals to plus so what this indent means is this statement is part of this big if statement. You say, okay, if symbol is five is plus, then print plus and then check if symbol is negative, which doesn't make sense because if symbol is plus, we know symbol is not going to be minus, right? But now if we do shift tab, now we're checking both. Okay, is plus five, and then we're checking is symbol minus. So this this cannot have an indent here. Okay, and now what we need is we need to actually input numbers. So let's make, again, first number equals to int, int input, because first number has to be an uh, integer. And then the second number, let's do it like this, second number equals, again, int input. All right, and now what I want to do here is let's get rid of this and let's make, in if it's plus, we want the answer to equal first number plus the second number. If it's minus, we want the answer to equal first number minus the second number. And then at the end, we print the answer. Now if we run this, four minus three, one. Now a common mistake would be again, if you indent this, if you indent this, and let's make two plus three, it's gonna print nothing. Why? Because we are only printing if the symbol equals mine negative, right? So now, for example, if we run it again and do four minus one, now it's going to print because this, you only call print when symbol equals minus. That's it, because this is, but now if we move it to the left, then we always run this. It's not part of the if statement, even if this is false, we're still gonna run the answer. Okay, so again, there's a big difference. Python is one of those languages where it matters whether you indent or not. Again, everything that's indented in this case after this column, if you indent this, everything that's, that only happens if symbol is negative. And everything that goes here, that this only happens, only happens if symbol is positive, right? And then if you do it here, well, then it always happens. Always happens. Okay? Because this is not part of this if statement. It just, just flows like this. Okay? And the way it works is it just, where every time you write a code, it goes top down. So this is the first line, second line, third line, fourth line. And this line is only, we only solve this line if the if statement is true. Okay? So now, for example, if we run it, we know four, okay, plus two, all right, six. Now I would like to add a third function, which is multiplication. Let's make now if symbol equals, uh, generally speaking, we use the asterisk sign, but you know, we could use anything. Oh, and by the way, there's no difference between double quote and single quote in Python. And you know, let's do asterisk. Okay, if we put asterisk, then answer equals first number times the second number. Now we added the third functionality, as you see, let's make three times four. 
Okay, now we got 12. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to give you a homework. Again, make sure to practice because to be a really good programmer, you have to practice, right? Try adding a division symbol and try making it a slash. Okay, so in other words, if I put here, I want to make, if I put 10 slash 2, now if I hit enter, I want this to return 5. Currently it doesn't do anything because we don't have that slash functionality and that's why it gives us the error. But I want you to add that, you know, division. And then you could also try to try adding the modulus, right? Take the remainder. So for example, if, if, if it was something like nine, you know, modulus, you know, two, it should return one, right? Because nine divided by two is four, and then we have one remainder. So this should return one. Add those two functionalities. And um, also make sure to like and subscribe. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And see you next time.